guide, he have led us from darkness and to this great marvelous light of holiness. Why, we don't have the words to express our gratitude. Seeing in time past that it is written, we walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the powers of the air, the spirit that now work in the children of disobedience. One of the greatest days of our life is when God opened up your understanding through a interruption of some sort. Yes, but the interruption was through mercy and not in judgment. I thank God for blessing us with such a knowledge. You know, knowledge is power. And I see that more and more and more. That without the knowledge of God, we will be just more messed up than we ever was. When you look back at the time when you were ignorant and didn't know, now that you're starting to know, you can see great spiritual improvement and mental and emotional modifications that the scriptures make to one's existence. Without knowledge of who God is, we will always need repair. And that's what the scriptures is. It's a manual that repairs everyone. Because all of us is broken. We are damaged products. Everybody is damaged. Mind is damaged. Heart is damaged. Spirit is damaged. Well, when God bring you into the knowledge of his church, the church is the repair shop. It'll fix everything about you that's broken. And it will break everything about you that you think is fixed. It does both. Amen. So we are grateful. And as always, we thank God for adding another year to our life. We thank God for that. Um, I want to thank all the brothers and sisters of the birthday wishes. Also, I received a folder this morning. Uh, I believe from the secretary out of the churches in Canada and the many well wishes that came in out of Canada, New Zealand, Australia, England, Birmingham, England, Ireland, Scotland, across Africa, South Pacific, and literally from all around the world. I thank God for your consideration. Our objective is plain and simple. Preach the gospel to keep everybody out of hell. And uh, that's one of the greatest opportunities that we all will have in this lifetime. I am forever grateful of the thousands upon thousands of letters that continue to pour in every day. I remember when it was just weekly. Now it's several times a day. Thousands of letters, people who are thankful and greatly appreciative for the way of holiness coming to their country, to their website, to their radio, to their phone, to their television. All of us are experiencing God's mercy. Brother Tony Harvin, I'm glad to hear that you're back. He's one of the soldiers that was pushing this program and YouTube canceled him. They took him down and uh, but they reinstated him. He's back again. That's a blessing. The devil don't want no one to push this. Mm -mm. When you push this, you push truth. And the devil find this message of holiness very offensive because it exposes him and deliver his children and turn them over to God. All of us sometime in our life were the devil's children. And I'm pretty sure my enemies feel as though I'm still the devil's child. But nevertheless, the scripture says the foundation of God.
standeth ashore with a seal upon it. Now to my viewers, I want to update you. Also, we had a beautiful meeting uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, dedication service viewers. We baptized 95 in the name of Jesus Christ at the Atlanta, Georgia, dedication service. The following week was the very first service in Lafayette, Louisiana of the new work that we started. We went there once, I believe it was December or November of last year, where we baptized 78 in two days. And as a result of that service, we started a new church in Lafayette, Louisiana. The first service of that church was, uh, first service was last Sunday, and it was packed. 31 souls went down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we, were, we received a request out from the head of the Black Panther Party, who's head of one of the chapters in the city of the state of Louisiana. He was there when I went last year in Lafayette, and he talked to me and gave an open testimony. Uh, oh, he and many members of the Black Panther Party watch this program and love it. And uh, he said, I would love for you to come. Me and the Black Panther Party want you to come. I can't think of the name of the city, but my secretary, Sister Rollins, I told him to talk to her and get the information. And we will let the public know the time and place and location where we will be addressing uh, the Black Panther Party. He said, I asked him, why would you want me to come? He said, oh, we've been watching you for years. And we love the fact that you're not afraid to tell it like it is. He said, in our city, there's a lot of murder, a lot of killing. Well, that's everywhere. And uh, I find it very offensive and hypocritical the slogan, Black Lives Matter, is a true slogan. It is a true statement. But I, I, I find it very hypocritical. And I find it greatly offensive that this is stated or paraded about and the voices are lifted up in the earth only in most occasions when a white man kill a black person. Black lives should matter when there is a black person killing a black person or a black man is raping a black woman. That same energy that Fill the streets of America when these low lives that pose as policemen, all policemen are not bad. There are some good white brothers and there are some good white sisters and there are some good black brothers and good black sisters. But you have no good low life poor crooks of very nationality across the board. But when you can just yell black lives matter when white cops kill black people, it's hypocritical. Because our black people are murdering and killing each other every day like mad dogs. Here in Philadelphia alone, almost 600 or close to 700 homicides. And most of them, blacks killing black. Oh, whites doing it too, but to my sad regret, the blacks get most of publicity because you, young men, young women, that's running the streets, the wildebeest of Africa, have more discipline than your madness. And don't pass the buck. And say white people got you like this. Murder is a choice. Are right. you listening to the old man? Well, Pastor Jenny, you don't know what it's like. All oh, hush your mouth. I am a full thoroughbred black man from the hood. Amen. When I came up, 
If we had a disagreement and wanted to mix it up, in my generation, the term fair one was introduced. You young people don't know what fair one means. Fair one mean, all right, whoever's the best one with his hands, let's mix it up. The best man win. It's a fair one. So nobody pull out a gun or a shank or a razor or a knife. Best man win. And once we done, we go play basketball or go play half ball or go play football. Or you'll find the same two fellas on the corner with a brown paper bag uh, passing around a fifth. And they live to get drunk the day after. But to my sad regret, the hatred. One journalist asked me, Pastor Jennings, why is it that black people hate each other so much? Well, let us not make this just black folk. The world hate each other. White on white, black on black, brown on brown, yellow on yellow. I don't care what color you are. The hatred is in the earth so great and the reason why it is there because the human family, not everybody, but uh, you show me a person that hate the human race, I show you a person that hate God. Nobody can truly love the human race. You can't even properly love yourself until you first love your creator. When you come into the knowledge of God, he will bring you into the knowledge of your own self. And then you will realize why you were created. God said, I made you for my glory. So young people of every color under the sun, God don't have you here to run the streets and rob and rape and kill. For what? For, what? for the dumbest reason. That's right. Amen. He like Karen and he like Karen and Karen used both of them. And then he go kill the other fella and then Karen go date someone else that she and, and then use them. That's right. Why is it that you young men will kill each other over a woman? And why is it you silly women will be outside all on YouTube snatching wall green hair out your head? Right. Snatching payless earrings out your ears, walling and all over the floor and the crowd won't stop it. Because to them, that type of cat fighting is like two pit bulls. It is entertainment. People get pleasure when people disgrace themselves in public. The message of holiness is designed from God to straighten you up and straighten you out. Put you on the straight path. If you want to have a proper relationship among the human family, then the human family must first establish a proper relationship between them and God. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. All right, let me update you with those that were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, 13 in headquarters, one in New Brunswick, two in Middletown, New York, two in Bronx, New York, two in Portsmouth, four in Newport News, one in Baltimore, Four in Raleigh, North Carolina. Six in Charlotte, North Carolina. One in Columbia. Thirteen in Atlanta. Two in Augusta, Georgia. Three in Jackson, Mississippi. <clears throat> three in Memphis. One in North Chicago. One in Milwaukee. Three in Indianapolis. Four in Sacramento. Uh, last week, as I mentioned, uh, 31 in Lafayette. International baptisms. Two in Canada. One received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Six in the Netherlands, two in Brisbane in Australia, two in Townsville in Australia, six in Johannesburg, South Africa. In one week, 115 souls baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, uh, let, before I dive into the Bible, let me just remind everybody that our youth conference is approaching, God willing, in April. We want to see as many hundreds of you as possible. Now, the reason why we're not holding it in Philadelphia because our main auditorium is not done. 
and we just can't hold everybody in one auditorium. And I know many folk come from overseas, come from far, and they be in an overflow gymnasium, us packed from front to back, and you know, and some want to be able to be in the same room where everything is taking place. So we're going to move everything to Greensboro, North Carolina, at the convention center, where we can hold several thousands in that convention center. So we want to see everybody from throughout America and abroad that's able to be there. We'll be there for three days. Now, the buses, not one bus from headquarters. We want to get practically all the buses loaded up because the convention, this, uh, this is a convention. So therefore, one bus ain't going. We want all the buses ready, ready. They go down to Greensboro for our youth holy convocation. Yeah. Now, let me say to my uh, transport team, as I mentioned, we start the new, starting a new trucking company, Way of Holiness Transport. My attorney has finished all the paperwork. We got our dock number. And we can put our dock number on all of our trucks now. That's a blessing. I'm glad that's done. Now, all members, all CDL drivers, all dispatchers, all mechanics, all that came to sign up for the way of holiness transport team. We will be having a meeting during our youth conference in April, Saturday at 2 o'clock. It is mandatory that everybody of the way of holding this transport team be there. Saturday at 2 o'clock. There will be brothers of the security team directing you to the room where the meeting will be held. I want everyone listening and pay attention. Saturday at 3 o'clock, after my transportation team is finished, Saturday at 3 o'clock, we will be holding our first agricultural meeting, our farming meeting. We want to get ready to start working on our land that was given to us some years ago. We have over 30 acres of land in Georgia. And I'm farming a team that, I'm not talking about someone that know how to plant flowers, no, no, no. I'm not talking about someone that know how to, you know, put little flat. no, I need someone that know how to, that know what it is to till uh, the land, know when to plant. We want to plant our peaches and oranges and apples and uh, sweet potatoes and uh, collard greens and pinto beans. And I need a whole team of men and women. I know how to eat them. But there's different times where you plant different things. So this is a call out for men and women. That meeting will take place three o'clock. And I will appoint different ones, brothers and sisters, to oversee that team who know how to drive the tractors and know where to take the crop and what season to plant, what season to harvest, everything. We just not setting up a tractor trailer transport team just to get contracts with other companies. We want to grow our own products and haul it. Now, this is where my expertise come in at. And buy our own foreclosed buildings to open our own stores. Wonderful. Amen. And we want to start opening up our stores in every city where we have a first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. 
And then after we go from stores, we want to have our own supermarket. Amen. I'm not just looking at planting food to eat on this land. We also want to have our livestock. Amen. Oh, yes, I want all of that. Amen. So I need them that know what it takes for the cow and the chicken and things of that order. Well, how to feed them. You know how to eat them. Amen. I, I want all that. Our chicken houses. Amen. Nice long looking place. Amen. I wish I could have a false prophet house. As long as a chicken house. Make him sit down a while till he hatched the truth out. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But we have over 30 acres. And we want to utilize it. I can never thank God enough for Mother Rose who came when years ago. She come to walk with this truth. And before she came, there was other preachers that knew she had this property. I didn't know nothing about it. Oh, they was in behind Mother Rose because they wanted the land. They didn't care nothing about Mother Rose. She said, Pastor Jennings, and she came and began to tell me how the different prequels in behind her. I said, it's your land. You ain't got to give it to the church. She said, it's too much for me. I want the church to have it. I said, well, that's up to you, but I'm telling you, you don't have to give it to the church. She said, you're the first preacher that even said that to me. <laughs> she said, yeah, I know you're the right one because these preachers, the first thing they look, your land, your land, your land. I want your soul. I ain't worrying about your land. That's right. Amen. But uh, not only Mother Rose, there are others who uh, express interest of wanting to give their land to the church. We don't ask the people to do this. No. They do it out of the goodness of their heart because they know they got a preacher that won't steal nothing from them. Right. Nothing. And I don't ask you for nothing. Only thing I ask you for is to give your mind, hallelujah, your mind, heart, body, and soul over to God. So this is what we want to do. We want to set up the Truth of God farming team. I need farmers that know how to plow and plant, who's not afraid of calluses, because what I want to do, I want to give our young children farming experience. That way, if you got a lazy son or a lazy daughter, send them to the farm. <laughs> Amen. Let them know what our ancestors. You know, when I was a child, I used to spend the summer in Raleigh, North Carolina, in Lewisburg, where my aunt Irene father had about a hundred acres of land. I mean, I can't, I don't, about two or three or four different fishing ponds. And uh, that's where I first experienced plowing. But I thought my uncle, Red Bird, you know them country names, Red Bird, Eula May, and Uncle Pie, and you know, and, and Cousin Lemonade and all that stuff. You know, so I was used to seeing farmers with tractors and plows. And, but my uncle wanted me to have an old school experience. You know, years ago, it would be one man standing behind a plow and uh, he would have a harness tied to a mule or horse. And a man would be behind that one plow. Well, my uncle... He didn't have the mule or the horse, but he had this little, little lawnmower or little tractor. And he taught me how to drive that little thing and he showed me how to guide the plow and make sure everything is straight. One plow, 100 acres of land, one plow. Did you get the revelation? One plow. He said, now, Nikki, this is how you do it. I said, all right. And, uh... <laughs> So he said, now you come on down, I'm going to drive a little bit. And you plow. It was interesting to me, though. And uh, I helped that one plow. And he drove that, looked like to me, a little tractor, a little lawnmower, the kind you sit down on slow. And all oh, that thing dug down that dirt, brother. After all that long time, I felt it everywhere. 
And then I begin to think how hundreds of years ago men and women done this from sun up to sundown. No paid vacation. How many here as a child know what it's like to pick cotton? Raise your hand. Oh. Now, the many of you that are watching, when you pick cotton, it wasn't like when you go to Rite Aid and buy a bag of cotton. When you pick cotton, you all them thorns and getting stuck and all of that stuff. Hard work. Hard work. No vacation. Sun up, sun down. That's right. So we're not only uh, laboring to help the people spiritually. I'm a firm believer, like this word of God, when I read about Israel, Israel was self-sufficient. That's right. We want to have our own laundry mats. We are, God already blessed us with 200,000 square feet campus. We got two school buildings. One of the buildings we want to turn to an actual school, and, and man, we have already a separate uh, group for that, Wonderful. for GEDs and all that. And the larger school, we want to give that to the senior citizens. I want to turn that to the Truth of God Senior Citizens Home. So our elderly brothers and sisters can live right on the church ground. That way they ain't got to wait for service to come to church, they can creep on out. Of, they build whenever they want. Amen. Come on in church. And, Wonderful. And uh, get in there and pray the place out. Wonderful. That way when folks come in, uh, prayers is already circulating in the building. Amen. 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 So uh, it's a lot that we got in mind to do. Someone say, you think too big. No. In order for me to think too big, God going to have to be too big. And I'm a believer in what's written here, that with God everything is possible and God has given me a vision. If you can see it, that's all right, but you've been in it for quite some time now. And you are watching it and have watched it unfold around the world. God has blessed us to buy many, 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 many countless of acres of land and so many parts of Africa and India. For what? Feed our hungry folk. That's right. Hey Amen. I don't care how much gospel you got. This ties in with it. That's right. Hey Amen. So we bought acres of land. I, mean, I, I never saw rice fields before until I went to India. I never knew how rice even grew. All I know, you go to the market and buy it. But when I first went to India, that's when I first saw rice fields. And when I first went to India, and preacher came in with us. He had 20 churches in the year 2005 of February. And he said he never dealt with Internet, but he said it was, he knew it was more to what he was preaching than what he had and he said he went to the internet for the first time in his life, one time. And that's where he heard about us. And we went to India in 2005. Amen. And he came in with all 20 churches. And then October of 2005, he died. Before he died, I never understood why he said the Lord bless him to make it just in time. So... He came in with 20 small churches, but when those small churches add up, it was many hundreds of people. But because God made us a building and gave us a vision, we built over 30 more churches to add to the 20. Yeah. So now we have over 50-something churches in the South Indian region. So then we start buying land. So our poor brothers and sisters can grow all they can so they can eat. That's right. Amen. It is our place. That's right. If you don't remember the poor, you neglect the poor, you don't remember Jesus. That's right. And you're not really serving him. I don't care if you are baptized. That's 
That's right. In the name of Jesus Christ, and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. This is part of the teachings of the Christ. That's right. He said, the poor you have with you always, and if you have them always, then we are obligated to remember the poor. It don't mean just remember and think about them. Oh, there's poor folk. No. That's right. That means do something about it. That's right. Amen. That's right. So uh, this is what we have done, and this is what we're doing. We're setting up businesses. We want to have our own livestock, cows and chickens and turkeys and Amen. I don't mean just get them and don't know how to raise them. Amen. I know what a, a gar garnish hen. I, all I know that's a little something. What is that thing anyway? Gar cornish hen. Garnish. <laughs> I call it garnish. <laughs> Amen. Uh, pheasants. I don't know nothing. All I know is a pheasant is a bird, but some folks, they eat them. Yeah. Amen. Uh, wild game. Well, you know, that's up to you. But praise <laughs> the Lord. We also want to uh, have business associates with the when it comes to meats and foods. Mm -hmm. I also want to have business associate with the Amish and the Quakers and the Jewish community and the Islamic community. So I'm saying, why is that, Pastor Jennings? I'm not talking religion. I'm talking food. That's right. Because the mythology that they have and raise in their livestock is a very ancient mythology. They keep, listen, seasoning your meat. Meat tenderizing, tight, uh, meat tenderizing starts not when you go to the store and cook it. It starts when you feed it. That's right. You got to know when to feed it and what to feed it. And how to kill it. Amen. And all I have to do with the toughness or the tenderness of your meat. I don't, I don't, I don't like lamb, but that don't mean we don't have to raise them. We can raise them. That's right. I, I don't know nothing about, I taste lamb one time and I was on the lamb with the lamb. <laughs> Amen. I just can't get into, uh, you know, just give me basic chicken and fish and once in a while turkey and hallelujah. You know, some of the others, they do all that other stuff and that's all right. That's God right. says all things that he made is good. Good. But uh, this is what the truth of God have on the table. Not just spiritual. That's right. But natural. We want to open up stores and businesses. So we're getting our trucking company together uh, where we can carry our produce. We're getting our real estate together so we can buy foreclosed uh, property in every area where we have a church. And that way we can start our store right in the areas where we have the churches. Right. Then the unemployed can be employed. Uh, and we won't sell nothing out of our stores that contradict the word of God. That's right. At here, here, here now. That's right. Absolutely nothing like that. That's right. We preach against cigarettes and we ain't selling them. Right. Now we preach against makeup because the Bible's against us, so we ain't selling no lipstick at all. Oh, no. None I said. No rouge on your face. There's nothing at the only paint you will have is the color of your natural skin. That's it. Amen. We want to have our own fish market. Sure we do. Them that know how to uh, uh, get. I'm not talking about farm raised fish. No, no, I'm not talking about that. Something you eat and taste like you eating a sponge. No, I'm talking about real meat, not minced meat. That's right. I'm not talking about that. So, uh, you that's uh, interested uh, in the farming area, you come on and be in this three o'clock meeting during the youth conference in Greensboro, North Carolina. My transportation team, your meeting is at two. Take note of it, write it down. The way of holding this transport team meeting Wonderful. is at two o'clock. Three o'clock is our farming meeting. Amen. Once we get our cafeteria up and going, I'm going to do a trial run. Yeah. We're not, it, it won't just be open for anniversaries and conventions. I'm going to do a trial run because we want to have everything open buffet style. Wonderful. And I want to do a trial run in the neighborhood and uh, let it be open on Saturdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. Yes. Amen. And I advertise it so the neighborhood can come to the Truth of God cafeteria. And there'll be a big screen, massive screen, 
where you can watch and listen to holy preaching. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, I, I got all kind of ways to catch it. Amen. 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 You like to eat anyway. That's why so many of them follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. They know that the word was out. He, he, he multiplied fish. You know. <laughs> the word was out. He, right. he, he multiplied fish and bread. And you know, folk, they love to eat. Love to so we're going to set you down yeah. and let you eat. Or oh, take God and the word of God going to come. Amen. Some may turn their plates over and leave, but that's all right. Amen. We're going to get it to you. That's so right. this is what we're laboring on. And this is what we want to start. And our business session will start in Greensboro, North Carolina. Wonderful. So I want everybody, all of you. Amen. We're looking to see you in April. God be our helper. You go to our church website and you'll see the dates and the times uh, of the convocation. Way of holding this transport, your meeting will be Saturday at 2 o'clock. I want my secretaries that's responsible for posting this information, post it in bold writing. Let it flash. Let it blink. Because, you know, some folk memory is very short. That's right. The Way of holding this transport team meeting will be 2 o'clock. The farming meeting will be 3 o'clock. Because Saturday service will start at 4 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. Also... Wonderful. So much coming to my mind. We are forming the Truth of God Adult Mass Choir and the Truth of God Children's Mass Choir. The Mass Choir will incorporate members from everywhere. I don't care if it's 100, 200, 300, 4. We're formulating our mass choir. The first meeting of the Truth of God mass choir. Because I'm going to be in the first meeting. There's some things I need to say to you. My minister's meeting is at 10 o'clock. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So uh, I tell you what, my mass choir meeting, children's mass choir and adult mass choir will be Saturday at one o'clock. So I got a busy day. Don't call me for conferences. Don't call me. Call my secretary or call the Lord. <laughs> one o'clock. All of you that's interested in being in the Truth of God Mass Choir, that will incorporate members from the Truth of God message all around the world Amen. to be a part of this Mass Choir. And the Truth of God Children's Mass Choir. Now the adult Mass Choir will be from 17... Up to 60. 65. Amen. That's, 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 that's good. The children's will be from 5 to 16. Now we got hundreds of children. And uh, we want you there by the number. We want our mass choirs to be prepared. That way you will be singing for conventions and whatnot because we're getting these things together because the main auditorium is, is looking good. Amen. Now we have three balconies and, and, and all that floor seating room and that's still not enough space to hold the people. Yeah. But when we dedicate the main auditorium, we want to have the adult mass choir, Dan DeMann, Stasiak, He's been working on because uh, we want to buy a two-hour block, if we can, that air our dedication service on HBO. That's what we're working on. Amen. HBO, they always airing foolishness. Amen. Why not put some old-fashioned, holy, for the first time, sanctified preaching on there? That's right. 
That's what we're working on. We're working on trying to get this thing on HBO. We want to buy a two hour block. Amen. Amen. You pray with us that the Holy Ghost will make this happen. Wonderful. So the call is out. Also, in the near future, we're farming our Caribbean, our Caribbean mass choir, okay. which will incorporate all the first churches of the Lord Jesus Christ from every Caribbean island. We're pulling them all together. Amen. And we are farming our European Truth of God Mass Choir that will cover all the United Kingdom, all the Netherlands, all of Scotland, all of Ireland. Amen. We will be farming our South Pacific Mass Choir because we got churches all over there near Japan. And so many Crook Islands, Fiji Islands, Samoan Islands. Amen. Some folks say, don't your mind rest? Well, sometimes. I have a vision. I am doing a great work. What? In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 6 and verse 3. The Holy Ghost says. Yeah. I am doing a Hallelujah. great work. Oh, Hallelujah. oh, yes. That's why I've been telling you that fight against it. I want to encourage you to be obedient to my command. <laughs> That's right. And keep fighting. That's right. And I want to say to all of my brothers and sisters, when you see Yosemite Sams and Alfalfas and Stymies and Buckwheats fighting this, do not get into a tit for tat with nobody. No. Amen. When, when they log on to this program saying all type of things, the objective, remember, is to distract you from the message. That's right. Don't comment on nothing they say. Don't, don't get in no dialogue. Let them say what they want to say. Right. Jesus said, let them alone. Let them alone. If the blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. The prophet, give chapter and verse for this. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 6 and at verse 3. Yes. And I send messengers unto them. I send messengers. Unto them. Unto them. Saying, I am doing a great work. I am doing a great work. So that I cannot come down. Over to God. Amen. I'm determined. Hallelujah. Blessed be God not Hallelujah. to come down. That's right. When I think of how God has took this message right. and spread it and everywhere we have went, That's we right. have never made a failure. Amen. But the God of heaven has stood behind it. Blessed be God oh, yes. from every state, every country where the soul of our feet have tread. God have given us the land. That's right. Amen. God gave it to us. Oh, yes. Uh, and I'm glad that we have uh, that report. Until the Bible said, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Okay. All right, I want to work on today being overzealous. Yes. I want to go back to that. Go back to that. Being overzealous, having a zeal. But without knowledge. without knowledge. In a hurry to do a whole lot of nothing. That's right. There are many now, I'm pretty sure, ridiculing what the program we outline for the truth of God. But yet the Jews have that program. Mm. The Jews have it, the, don't they? What I'm saying is not nothing foreign. The Jewish community have their own stores, their own businesses, their own malls, their own shops their own industry, their own network, their own everything. That's right. Even the Muslim community have their own stores, their own markets, their own clothing stores. And let me say this why it comes to mind before I forget. <laughs> so many hundreds of people are writing in and want to know, does the truth of God have merchandise? Well, uh, we have a, uh, our, one of our classrooms over there, very large, our classrooms are very large, one we turn into a studio would be the Truth of God Studio 21. Yeah. And once that get complete, then we'll be able to sit down with men of various religions and of various backgrounds, even politicians, asking them political questions from a biblical perspective. Yeah. Someone said, how can you do that? What you think King David was? He was a prophet and a politician. That's right. What you think a king is? A king is a politician who implement policies that govern the kingdom. That's right. So uh, once that get going, we also got that. But we're going to take one of the classrooms and turn it to the Truth of God store. Mm -hmm. 
right. where we will be able to advertise the Truth of God merchandise online and you'll be able to order it right from the Truth of God store. Wonderful. Whether it's sweatshirts, whether it's jackets, whether it's caps, uh, whether it's pants, amen, whether it's gloves, whether it's scarves, whether it's Bibles, Wonderful. amen, notebooks, pencils, mugs, amen. So uh, i let you know when I will have that meeting because them that's, in, that's interested in Truth of God merchandise, I want to hear your input. I want to hear your ideas. I want to hear your thoughts. Don't bring me nothing foolish now. That's right. No, don't, I, want, I want something that works. That's right. That know it works. That's right. All right, let's go to work. I want everybody now to get your Bible. Mm -hmm. Get your Bible now and follow me because I know what we outlined, many are offended by it, but you're still listening though, aren't you? That's right. All right, let's go to work. Romans chapter 10, and we'll start reading at verse 1. Listen. Brethren, my heart's desire. Brethren, talking to the church, mm -hmm. my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is and prayer to God Amen. for Jacob's offspring is that they might be saved. That's my desire. That's right. That's the only thing that have us traveling, preaching, laboring, opening up churches. I want to thank Brother Nars, the brother who uh, we put in charge to head the new project of the new church down in Monroe, Louisiana. Amen. I mean, he's on top of everything. The new church in Monroe, Louisiana is getting worked on now. Amen. I want to thank uh, Brother Parks, the brother we put in charge of the new Detroit temple. And he's head of that project there. And uh, Brother Howard, the brother we put in charge of the new temple in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and other brothers and other locations. I, it's so many now. Yeah. And we just keep pushing. Amen. Keep pushing. Someone say, when you going to stop? Uh, when God stop me. That's right. Amen. God willing, if I have the breath in my body, if I'm in a wheelchair, 95 years old, if, I say if, because I don't want to be in one. No. Amen. But if I got to lean on the pulpit, <laughs> and I I'm still want to be laboring. That's right. With God's help. That's right. Because I believe what is written here. Oh, yes. Be thou faithful. Until death. Until death. That's why I can't pay you fellas no mind who's doing so much hollering about the truth of God, but don't have nothing to show for what you're doing. That's right. Well, I take that back. You do have something to show for what you're doing. I see nothing because you're doing nothing. Amen. And nothing from nothing leaves a whole lot of nothing. That's right. What is that? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer my to God heart for Israel desire. is. And prayer to God for Israel that, that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of they God. They have a desire to get things done. But what is the problem? But not according to knowledge. Why? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. They being ignorant, blind. Amen. Of God's right ways. And going about to establish their own righteousness. What happened? Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want you to hear the old man. Amen. Give me some more juice back there. I don't know whether it's John back there, whoever it is. Give me some more juice. And Williams, too. There you go. Amen. Don't be afraid to make it loud. That's right. Amen. Make it loud today. That's right. Whenever you are overzealous, you're in a hurry without understanding. That's right. An overzealous person always got their nose in the Bible. That's right. That's and then right. the devil step in and capitalize on that zeal. Yeah. He started giving them revelations. Oh, yes. He started giving them dreams. That's right. And where there's revelations from the devil and dreams from hell, the next thing is misinterpretation of Scripture. That's right. That's all right. That's all right. And where there's misinterpretation of Scripture accompanied with the overdose of zeal, zeal. you have nothing but a shipwreck. Amen. The Bible says they have a zeal of God, a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. I want to build on that. Amen. Have a longing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got a longing to do something, don't think you know how to do it. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter three, know what you're doing. That's right. 
And if you don't know, ask. That's right. So you can be taught the right way. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, we'll start at verse 21. Yes. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee. Seek Neither not out the, things out the things that are too hard for thee. That's too hard for you. Neither search the things that are above thy strength. Do you hear this? Amen. I can't bench press 400. Yeah. I'm not even going to slide up under the weight. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. Someone said, I can bench press it. Okay, I look at you. <laughs> and thank God for you from afar. Amen. But I know I cannot bench press 400, so I'm not going to get under there to try to prove something to somebody no. and end up dead. That's right. That's right. Many have took matters in their own hands to get in the pulpit. Yeah. Get into the Bible and try to prove to others that they're able to quote scripture. Quoting Bible is not preaching. No. A parrot can quote scriptures if you keep repeating it to him. That's right. When you're able by the anointing and the inspiration of God, that's why the apostles had it all right. That's right. They got it from the spirit of God. Amen. Getting it from the spirit, all their information was correct. And after they was taught by the Spirit through the Son of God, Christ Jesus, That's right. the Spirit of God got in them yeah. to preach the message of holiness and sanctification. That's right. Now that same Spirit that was in the prophets and the apostles must get in men today yeah. to understand what is written, That's right. to properly interpret what is written, That's right. to properly explain what is written. What is written. Without the Spirit of God, they cannot accurately analyze and interpret the language of God, the thoughts of God, and then bring it so clear that a child can understand. That's why I, I, I thank God for the letters. Wonderful. And one thing that thousands of people were saying, that the word of God for the first time to them is so clearly explained. Wonderful. And I thank God that he didn't give us a unlearned tongue. That's right. But he gave us the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak a word in season. In season. Isaiah, Isn't that what the Bible says? In Isaiah chapter 15 and verse 4. Says what? The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. You see, your tongue, blessed be the most high, must be God given. That's right. Formed by God. That's right. Created by God. Amen. That you may properly pronounce. The message of God. That's right. And to properly bring the message of God, you must be able to make the prophets and the apostles harmonize. That's right. Not having one scripture contradicting the other. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. That I should know how to speak a word. What? That I should know how to speak a word in season. Wait a minute. Amen. That you should know how to preach the word at the, at, at the right time. To him that is weary. Amen. You have to know how to preach the word of God at the right time. That's right. In season, In season. it means at the right time. That's right. Glory to God. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wake morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear. He wake my ear to hear. As the learn. Glory to God. So God have to open. Open. The ears of the minister and seal his instruction. The Lord God hath opened mine ear. Do you hear this? In the book of Isaiah 50 and verse 5. He hath opened my ear. And I was not rebellious. I was, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be God. I was not rebellious. Hard head against what I heard. Neither turned away back. So he said, preach the word. Amen. Be instant in season and out of season. So when you're overzealous. Mm -hmm. The symptoms of an overzealous man or woman are anxiousness. That's right. Fasting more than what they should. Amen. Amen. Trying to fast three days and three nights every week. Every week. That's Running right. at a pace they can't keep up. Be not righteous over much. They can't keep up the pace. Yeah. Always got their nose in the Bible reading, but yet don't wait to get an understanding, but it's quick to fight based upon what they read. That's right. Overzealous. Overzealous. 
ready to condemn and reprove and rebuke, and yet they themselves don't understand who Jesus is. That's right. Overzealous bring about being overrighteous. Overrighteous. They so overzealous. They can't even be a father to their children. That's true. A child can't even play with the doll baby without the father telling him, if you play with the doll baby, you're going to hell. That's right. He's so overzealous that if his wife go out and buy a negligee because she just want to, amen, entice yeah. and lure her husband, yeah. <laughs> she'll come in all dowdied up and stand up the door and say, honey, what you think? Mm -hmm. But because he's so overzealous, he'll say, listen, you Jezebel, take that off. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Overzealous, besides getting up testifying what God done for you, yeah. you want to seize that moment to try to preach. Amen. And show people what little knowledge that you don't have. That's right. Overzealous. Be not righteous over much. When you're overzealous, besides on your knees praying, asking God for help, you down there trying to give a sermon. Mm-hmm. That's right. Overzealous. That's right. You see, when you're righteous over much, you're trying to do more than what even God told you to do. Neither make thyself overwise. What? Neither make thyself overwise. Listen, just be wise. That's it. It's more easy to be dumb. <laughs> That's right. It's difficult to be wise. That's right. But when you find someone overwise, they overanalyze the Bible. Amen. You know, have you ever talked to some people who they take a situation and overanalyze it? They read into it too much. Right. And the situation is not even what, what they think it is. That's right. But they just overindulge their thinking and come out upset and mad over something they ain't got to be mad about. <laughs> That's right. That's true. Overzealous. Be not righteous over much. Do you hear this? Still in the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 16. Don't be righteous over much. Neither make thyself overwise. Hey Amen. Don't make yourself overwise. Why shouldest thou de destroy Why thyself? Should listen, if you're righteous, here, 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 hear the old man now. Amen. If you're righteous over much, and if you're overwise, mm -hmm. the prophet asks a question. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? He letting you know that if you're righteous over much or overwise, what's gonna happen to yourself? Why should Shouldest thou destroy thyself? Why would you destroy yourself? Be not over much wicked. Don't be over, don't overdo your wickedness. Neither be thou foolish. Don't be foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Amen. When you're righteous over much, Amen. you're going to declare the Lord said this, the Lord said that, the Lord said the other. That's right. Amen. Someone called me and said uh, they was picking with me. I said, what's going on, brother? I said, what's funny? He called me from Alabama. He said, uh, your buddy is dreaming about you again. Lord. I said, I don't have no buddy. He said, I know, but uh, we're talking about who we down here call Yosemite Sam. He's dreaming about you again. He said, the Lord told him something else about you. And the Lord told him this about you. The Lord told him that about you. My Lord, well, my Lord. Lord, how can one man be on the mind of someone so bad? How long shall this be in the heart how of the How long? Shall it be in the heart of the prophets? Of the prophets. That prophesy lies. That prophesy lies. They, they are the prophets they of the They are the deceit. prophet of their own deceit. Of their own of heart. Of their own heart. I have heard what the prophets said. I have said. heard the prophets say. That prophesy that lies in my name. prophesy lies in God's name. Saying I have dreamed. I had a dream. I have dreamed. I had a dream. That's right. That's right. Amen. It's written. It's written. It's written. I have to preach it because it's written. That's right. Hey Amen. Think of it, viewers. All these men in the world. How is it that one man always one man. dreaming about Pastor Jennings? That's right. How is that? How, right. That one sad man stranded on an island somewhere. That's right. Can have all these dreams about Pastor Gino Jennings. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Do you hear this? Saith the Lord. And what make it so bad whenever someone hates someone. Yeah. If, if Brother Williams hates shade and yeah. Williams keep dreaming about shade, someone that got the same feelings towards shade that shade don't know nothing about, yeah. All Williams got to do is say, I had this dream about shade, this dream about shade. Some folk gonna get on Williams' dream bandwagon. Yes, they would. You know why? They feel the same way about shade that Williams do. That's right. There's these lemonade preachers. That's right. Who's out there talking about they had dreams about Pastor Jennings, he gonna die, and they saw that first church fell apart. Yes. Listen, 
It'll never happen. It'll never happen. And if they say God said it, they lied on Jehovah. That's right. Amen. That's God right. Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, is with the truth of God. That's right. How long? That's Who right. will take God until Jesus comes? Amen. Amen. So you don't ever have to worry about the church folding up or souls stop coming in or people no. all leaving the church. No, sir. Oh, no. Uh, this thing is bigger than Pastor Jack. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's bigger. Hallelujah. Then Pastor Jenna. See, that's being overzealous. Oh, yeah. That's why I can thunder it. Glory to God. That's right. And hallelujah. And preach it to the world. That's right. Thanks be unto God because I got some backing here. Amen. Now, here's a fellow that's telling the world that God Almighty, and I can say it just as cool and calm, <laughs> with the greatest of confidence that the I am. Go ahead. That I am. Go ahead. Is with. The truth of God. That's right. So all of you fellas that have come with these McDonald's, Burger King, uh, uh, television, Libby Land dreams, dreams that come out of hell from your grammar school backpacks. That's right. You're late. That's right. Or if they got the truth of God, ship have already been to sell. That's right. And the devil in hell cannot harpoon it and make it sink. Amen. Amen. Because it's on float today by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Huh? I am against them. So God is against these fellows that got all these type of dreams. Men with dreams. Women with dreams. I don't pay that no mind. That's right. Amen. You came late. God Amen. have spoke to us over 40 years ago. <laughs> that's, right. that's why I laugh when I hear of the dreamers. But you bear in mind, dreams. when you're overzealous and overrighteous, you want to appear to be this uh, greatly divine person. That's right. Someone whom God always dealing with, and yet God you don't even know. That's right. Do you hear this? Back in Romans 10 and verse 2. What is it? For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the God. The danger of being overzealous. 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 Yeah, now, now, here, if you're an overzealous man, you're not even good to be a husband. No. You're not even good to be a, a father. You, you, you'll be overzealous. Well, someone said, how was that, Pastor Jennings? I remember years ago, there was a fellow that used to be with me in the Newport News Church. And he heard my testimony about fasting three days and three nights. So he went and tried it. Yeah. He went and overdone it. He went as far as being so foolish of putting his kids. He made his kids my Lord. fast three days and three nights. He starved his kids. My Lord. What a child know about fasting three days and three nights. That's right. That's right. When you're fasting, you got to have a purpose. That's right. You don't just do it just to do it. No. Overzealous. Overzealous. When you're overzealous, you ruin, you tear up your own household. An overzealous man cannot pastor a church. No way. He won't be able to carry, a, a, he won't, what little crowd he got, he gonna destroy that. That's right. And why? Because he gonna lie on God and say God said this and God said that and then he gonna say God said the other and then the people gonna sit back. Yeah. Waiting. Yeah. For that thing to materialize that he said, that he said, God said, will come. That's right. And then it never come. When a prophet. Here, here, viewers, viewers, yep. viewers, here, here, viewers, are you in the church? Hmm. Have you been in the church where the preacher got up and said, the Lord said this, the Lord said that, the Lord said the other, and you sit back and wait for it to come? Yeah. And here you done gone out that church for years and still ain't came? That's right. Hmm. That's true. You see, when you overzealous, you speak from your own feeling. That's Let me it. make an example. Just say if Brother Kevin is a, a pastor and Williams is a pastor mm -hmm. and God bless Elder Williams to build a large work and Kevin got it in for Williams. Mm -hmm. So then Kevin gets so jealous over Williams, the work that he's doing, Kevin go tell his congregation, well, the Lord done showed me we're going to build a large work. We ain't there yet, but we're going to build it. That's right. But the Lord didn't tell him nothing. That's right. But because he's envious of Williams, yeah. he just want to compete with Williams. And yet Williams don't even know that Kevin is on the earth. That's right. That's right. This is where men yeah. out of overzealousness try to compete with other men. That's right. God is not about competition. No. 
God is about salvation. That's right. That's right. When you're overzealous, you are ruined. You'll tear up the whole work. You'll tear up the church. That's right. You will tear up the church because overzealousness will ruin you from having a vision. Mm -hmm. You won't be a visionary. No. You will lie to the people to get the money out of them. That's right. You will lie to the people. And the only thing you will be interested in is uh, yourself. That's right. Your own self gain, your own self wickedness. That's I right. came from an overzealous bishop. The only thing he was interested in was buying multi Cadillacs yeah. and had two empty churches yeah. and had enough money almost to buy his whole neighborhood. Amen. Amen. But he said he didn't care if nobody yeah. would be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ ever again. Oh, yeah. He said, I don't care if no one is baptized again. He said, I don't care if nobody received the Holy Ghost ever again. He said, I done made it. He said, I'm satisfied. How in the world can you be satisfied sitting in the empty building for over 40, 50 years? That's right. And this as many have done. Many men quote the scripture, only a few going to be saved to justify themselves going nowhere. Going nowhere. That's true. When you're overzealous, you don't wait. That's right. For your time. That's right. You don't wait for the activation of the spirit. That's right. You have to wait until God says, let it be. Let it be. When you're overzealous, brother, you will ruin your relationship. That's right. You're not even married yet, just engaged. <laughs> but you're overzealous? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When you, I remember when we was in falsehood, the pre one, my one fella, he was so overzealous, he would take his Bible to go see his girlfriend. <laughs> And I remember it was sit night. I remember I asked sit night. I said, sit night, why you, why you take your Bible all the time? He said, well, you know, uh, Pastor Hinton told us that if we go, we should take our Bible. And I asked him, do you read it? He <laughs> bust out laughing. <laughs> why? He knew he wasn't reading it. That's right. I asked him, do you read it? Why are you there? Do you read it? He said, you know what he said? Well, he didn't say I had to read it. He just said I should take it. My Lord. And I asked him, do you read it over there? He said, no, I don't read it. Amen. He said, I'm not going over there to read. <laughs> Overzealousness, you take too much in your hand. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. Do you hear this? I want to make it rain, Bible. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 23. When you're overzealous, you go record yourself in your house mm. to see how you sound trying to, as you think, preach. <laughs> and then you give out those recordings to your little friends who's already pushing you. That's right. And then your friends will say, oh man, you got the anointing. Yeah. You got it, you got it, you got it. Because your friends, they overzealous too and they can't recognize the spirit of God from a mule that's bucking his hind heels. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And Be not curious. When you're overzealous, you'll just sit there and record yourself. You'll call your overzealous friend and make him your reader. Mm. And y'all get in the living room or in the bathroom or in your somewhere. He read and then you make little tapes and post them on YouTube or make CDs and spread them around. And so you can say, and, and, and this, is, this is the danger. When you don't know the sound of God, That's it. when you don't know the power of the spirit of God, right. you will call anything preaching oh, and anybody a preacher. That's right. That's right. Eh? That's right. All right, give chapter and verse, Williams. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 23. Yes. Be not curious in, un in unnecessary matters. Don't be curious. Don't be so nosy in matters that don't concern you. For more things are showed unto thee than men understand. Do you hear this? For more things are more shown things. unto thee. Are shown to you. Then men understand. Then what you can comprehend. For many are deceived by their own many vain opinion. Many are tricked. By their own vain and opinion. And that's what has ruined these overzealous. An overzealous person don't stay in the church long. No. No, they not. Not that one overzealous person stayed in the church long right. until he or she see themselves and then unplug. That's right. So they can wind down. <laughs> That's right. But there's some overzealous folk never wind down. Never wind down. Amen. And false prophets love to see uh, these overzealous fellows because they'll take them and push them in the pulpit quick. That's right. 
I mean, just toss them in the pulpit quick because they got the itch. That's right. They got the itch. So I want to say to all of you that's in the truth of God, don't be righteous over much. Over much. Amen. Be able to separate you shaking from the spirit of God. That's right. When the spirit of God stop, you shut up. Right. That's when the right. spirit of God stop talking in that tongue in you, close your mouth. Amen. Spirit of God stop shaking you. Peace be still. That's right. Spirit of God didn't tell you to make that prophecy, then shut your mouth. Amen. Spirit of God didn't give you that dream, then stop eating too many waffles and having dreams. That's right. Hey! That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20 and verse 32. I want to blast it to pieces here. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20 and verse 32. Come on, William. Necessary patience. Wait a minute. Amen. Necessary patience. calmness. Necessary restraint. That's right. Necessary patience. In seeking the Lord. In seeking the Lord. Is better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. Amen. Amen. Necessary patience. It is necessary, necessary that you take your time. That's right. One scripture says, he that believeth shall not make haste. That's right. Take your time. Amen. Amen. Don't get too close to an overzealous brother or an overzealous sister. No. When you start getting too close and all of a sudden they start sharing scriptures with you and here they just got started themselves. That's right. Next thing you know when they backslide, you're going to go right out there with him or her. Necessary patience. Necessary patience. And seeking the Lord. And seeking the Lord is better than he. It is better. Better than the one that leadeth his life without a guide. That's why you got to have a guide. A guide. Hey Amen. I believe in the eighth chapter of Acts when a eunuch was up there reading the scriptures, but yet didn't know who the scriptures was talking about. The Holy right. Ghost moved on Philip. That's right. Draw nigh to the yeah, chariot. And Philip questioned that fellow. That's right. Understand what, what thou read readest? And then the eunuch responded to evangelist Philip, how can I? Except hey, some man God should accept. guide me. Some man guide me. And Philip went on up in the chariot. That's right. And preached Jesus. That's right. And that's what I'm wanting to do now. I want to get in your chariot. <laughs> in your home, in your office, all in your car, how all on your computer. Yeah. Thank God all on your radio, on your Phone Go ahead. and preach Jesus. That's right. Thank God and Him crucified. That's right. And let you know it's only Him Hallelujah. and not another. Not another. Glory to God. That's Do right. You get what I'm talking. That's right. The necessary thing. Necessary patience. Necessary patience. And Hallelujah. Seeking the Lord. Glory to God and seeking the Lord is better is than He better. that leadeth His it's life. Better is better than the one that lead His life without a God running That's in right. a hurry and ain't got no guide. Ain't got no oh overseer. That's right. Don't have no leader. Just running. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Bible said, how can you hear without a preacher? Without a preacher. How can he preach except to be sent? That's right. You got to have a preacher. That's right. Huh? Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 4. Look at all this Bible. Just yeah. look at it. Ecclesiasticus. The book of Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sarah chapter 4. And at verse 29. Huh? Be not hasty in thy tongue. Amen. Do you hear this? Be not hasty. I've been, I've been telling people for the longest. If anybody come in the truth of God with the mindset Hallelujah. that you're going to change this teaching, why in the world would you come in here? That's right. That doesn't make no sense. No. Why in the world would you come here and stay a month, several months, a year, two years, yeah. thinking that you're going to change the teaching of the apostles? My Lord. Why would you waste your time? That's right. you better off learning how to be a brick mason or <laughs> a right. computer analyst or know how to crochet. <laughs> because I said before, I said it again, nobody, nobody. not even Gabriel Hallelujah. himself. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm declaring like the apostle Hallelujah. declared, Hallelujah. if an angel come from heaven any and gospel. bring any other gospel that they him be a from what we preach, Hallelujah. that the angels be a curse. Be a curse. As I said before, Don't say I now Hallelujah. again. So say I now again. If any man, what? If any man, that God, I don't care how Hallelujah. black you are, how white you are, how yellow, 
How Hallelujah. brown if you got so much money Hallelujah. until your suits are made out of a thousand dollar bill. If any man, if any man preach any other gospel preach any unto other you, gospel unto you that ye have received, then what you got, let him be accursed. I thought about a one preacher that came in and then he went and joined the false prophet mm -hmm. and said, I tried to help him. How in the world are you going to try to help us when you can't even do nothing for your own city? <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. How in the world are you going to be preaching somewhere for over 40 years and you can't even do nothing for yourself in 40 years? What in the world can you do for us in 40 hours? That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. And here when you come to the truth of God, it's already established. Amen. Going around the world. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead. Thousands of souls That's right. are constantly giving up That's right. and surrender. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It just has to be this way. Oh, Thanks yes. be unto God. The reason why it has to be this way because God spoke it. That's right. And said they lied. Hallelujah. It's going out Come into on. all the earth. And their words and their to the end word of the world. To the end of the world. Day unto day, utter, utter speech. speech. And night unto so night, show of knowledge. Hallelujah. There's no speech, no language. With Thank voice God with the voice. Hallelujah. Not heard. Oh, it takes God is not heard. That's right. Amen. So if you come in here with the thinking or the concept yeah. that you're going to change this teaching, it's best you stay home. That's right. Don't even look at First Church. That's right. If you walk by and your shoulder rub up against the building, Amen. don't even look at the building you rub up against. That's right. Because the word of God is sealed to the day of redemption. That's right. What did he say, son? Back, back in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4 and verse 29. Now, I had someone write me and say, Pastor Jennings, a gentleman wrote me an interesting letter, and he said, I noticed that uh, a lot of preachers are saying you're wrong. But I noticed the ones that are saying they're wrong, that you're wrong, they don't have no work. Yeah. They, every, they all saying you're wrong, but he said, I look at them, and they, they don't have no work. No works. But the ones they are condemning hear you all around the world. That's I, right. I, I'm telling the world, it's bigger than Pastor Jennings. That's right. It is not me. No. The devil have his youngins focus on me. That's and right. they keep Pastor Jennings this, Pastor Jennings that, as Lord Jesus this, that's Lord right. Jesus that. That's right. Not me, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus said, if I be lifted up that's right. from the earth, that's right. Oh, take God, I draw yeah. men unto me. Amen. That's why this thing thunder. That's yeah, right. so loud. Go ahead, go oh, ahead. Oh, take God and so firm. That's right. Because we lift Jesus up. That's it. And we do it the right way. That's it. Why? Because he's God. Go ahead. He declared something. I had a man write me and said, Hallelujah. Jesus said, never said he was God. He did? He did. Give me Revelation 1-8. Yeah, Revelation 1-8. I say Jesus Christ is God Almighty. Revelation chapter 1. And he 1. declared himself to be God. Revelation 1 and 8. Revelation 1 8 declared. I am Alpha, Alpha, I am Alpha, Alpha. And Omega. And Omega. The beginning and the ending. Who is it? Saith the Lord. Who said it? Saith the Lord. Who said it? Saith the Lord. Oh, here it is. Amen. Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord and the said. the Lord said, I'm Jesus. That's right. Jesus said, I'm Alpha. And Omega. Jesus said, I'm Omega. The beginning. Jesus said, I'm the beginning. And the ending. Jesus said, I'm the ending. Say it the Lord. Jesus said I'm the first. Which is? Jesus said I'm the last. That's right. I'm the Almighty. Which is? Are right, you listening to what and I And which was? I'm the Almighty. And which is to come oh, the Almighty. Take God. That's the Jesus declared himself. That's right. So you out there that Hallelujah. said Jesus ain't never said he was God. You don't know the Bible. That's right. You don't know the Bible. Amen. You better give me Revelation chapter 1 begin at verse 7. Revelation 1 and verse 7. I'm going to establish this is Jesus talking. Behold, he cometh with clouds. What? Behold, he cometh with clouds. And they ain't talking about none of the apostles. That's right. Huh? That's right. And man, one fella got over Zeus and said, well, Jesus going to judge everybody. The Bible never said God going to judge nobody. What? What? How blind! Now you lie, dog. That's what overzealousness do. That's right. When he said God, God ain't say he gonna judge on nobody, you blaspheme. Blaspheme. Because the apostle Paul said God is gonna judge the secrets of all men heart according to my gospel. my gospel. And when you say God won't judge the world, right. you blaspheme. That's a blaspheme. You don't ruin your chance to eternity with God. That's right. Stop being overzealous. Overzealous. God is going to judge the world. That's right. That's who Jesus is. That's right. Revelation 1, 7 says. Behold, he cometh with clouds. I was talking about the coming of the Lord. And every eye shall see him. See them. And him. Every eye shall see him. Every eye. 
shall see him. Shall see him. And they also which pierced him. Wait, 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 wait. Amen. When we see Jesus, Amen. Every eye, every eye shall see him. Now who else gonna see him? And they also which pierced him. Tell me who was pierced. That's right. Jesus. Who oh, say God? Tell me who. Hallelujah. Who was pierced? Tell me. That's right. Who was pierced? That's right. Holy Ghost say he coming with clouds. That's right. And yeah. shall see him. Shall see him. And they also which they pierce also him. They also which pierce him. And all kindreds of the earth and all shall the kindreds of the earth shall cry. Because of him. Because of him. Even so, amen. Amen. I am Alpha. And he's talking here. I am Alpha. Who is it? I am Alpha. I'm Alpha. And Omega. And Omega. The beginning. The beginning. And the ending. And the end. Saith the Lord. Say him, Jesus. Which is. Which is. And which was. Which was. And which is to come. Which is to come. The Oh, 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 Jesus, Jesus, God is not going to judge nobody. You have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. and you're lost Hallelujah. lost Hallelujah. that's why I tell you one scripture says be slow to speak That's right. Solomon says don't be hasty to utter anything before the Lord for we must all appear listen in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 10 and 11 the apostle Paul says what for we must all appear before where before the judgment seat of Christ before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done everyone. in his body everyone. everyone 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 may receive the things done in his body may receive what's done in his body according to that according he has according to done. that which he have done whether it be good good or bad or bad knowing therefore knowing therefore the terror of the Lord Amen. First it said the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment seat, that's right. And then it said the terror of who? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Oh that. He figures four and five. Amen. One Psalms one hundred and three. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter four and verse five. That's what? One Lord. How many? One Lord. How many? One Lord. Psalms one hundred and verse three. Know ye the Lord. Know ye the Lord. That he is God. Who is the Lord? That he is God. Who is the Lord? That he is God. Acts chapter nine and verse five. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord, 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 all of you out there that says Jesus Christ is not God, you're liars. Let's come on and jump on, Pastor Jennings. You ain't, we don't need no moderator. You don't need no letter. Just come on in here with your three God, two God doctrine, and I'll blast it to hell. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is God. Hallelujah. Almighty God. Hallelujah. When we call on Jesus, Hallelujah. we are calling on God. That's right. I better get some Bible for this. That's right. Give me Acts 7 59. Acts 7 59. Acts 7 chapter. And he said, who? And are? verse 59. Acts 7 and verse 59. Acts 7 and verse 59. Hear this. And they stoned Stephen. Wait a minute. They stoned Stephen. Calling upon God. Who was Stephen calling on? Upon God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Who was Stephen calling on? Calling upon God. And by what name did he call on God? And sang Lord. Saying. 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 Lord Jesus. Jesus. Calling upon God. Huh? That's right. When we down there praying, Go ahead. we hear us calling Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Now what are we doing? That calling upon We're God. Calling on God. That's right. When we anoint you with oil, that's right. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we are anointing you in the name of God. That's right. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Hallelujah. God. Blessed be God. And saying, Lord Jesus. This, this is why this gospel was far reaching. That's right. God is behind it. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. This is why we, by God's permission, Hallelujah. we go in every city, Hallelujah, and right. every state. <laughs> oh, it take God. I received several letters where folk was watching this message. Holy Ghost fell on them from the computer screen. Hallelujah. 
broke out speaking in tongues, looking at it on television. Hallelujah. Why? Hallelujah. It's the Spirit of God. That's it. And you're going to tell me Jesus Christ is not God? He's not God. Well, if your Jesus is not God, right. uh, he ain't got no power. That's right. Huh? That's right. He don't have no power. That's right. Amen. And that explains why is it okay. you can't do nothing? Oh, yes. And you don't have no work. That's right. And you don't have no power. That's right. God support this. Oh, yes. And may he open up the Red Sea of the world. Go ahead. For the truth of God. That's right. And the true dry land come up. That's right. And here we all able to just march. That's right. Glory to God in every state and every country in the world. Refrain from these men. Yeah. That's right. What did they say there? Acts chapter 5 and verse 38. Refrain from these men. And let them alone. Leave them alone. For if this council of this work this be of men, work be of men, it will come to naught. It will come to naught. But if it be of God, if it be of God, he cannot overthrow it. This is what I'm telling you. Why not? Ye less happily ye be found even to fight against God. So when you're over there, you should fight against God. That's right. And then say, God gave you this. God gave you that. God gave you the other. God ain't never gave nobody nothing to fight against his own word. That's right. Over Zagas person will ruin the committee he stand head of. Yeah. If he's head of the brotherhood, he'll ruin it. That's right. If she's head of the ushers, she'll destroy it. That's right. If he's head of the deacon staff, he'll scatter them. <laughs> if he's head of any local branch church, the people will walk out. That's right. And the church will be vacant. That's right. Because he don't have what it takes to lead the people and teach the people and instruct the people because the overzealous person is full of themselves. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. What? They have a zeal of God, but, what? but not according to knowledge. They don't know what to do. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to preach. That's right. They don't know how to read. That's right. They don't know how to lead the people. Amen. They just don't know. They being ignorant of God's righteousness. Wait a minute. What state of being are they in, Williams? They being ignorant. Of God's righteousness. Brothers and sisters and friends and enemies, this Amen. is a warning to you. Get this lesson. Oh, yeah. Don't be righteous over much. That's right. You can read the Bible all you want, but you better be careful. That's right. Because while you're in there, the devil going right in that Bible with you. That's right. Make you run fast. Yeah. Make you running in hurry. Then next thing you know, make you call the apostles a liar. That's right. While I was getting ready this morning, I was watching a panel discussion from 1970s mm -hmm. and uh, of uh, several... Uh, so-called black activists and black historians yeah. and one black preacher. I don't know whether he's living now or not, but he was a renowned black preacher back in the 60s and 70s. And he began to talk about black history and whatnot. But then he went on and said that the Apostle Paul was a racist. He said the Apostle Paul was a racist and Paul went to Europe and was influenced yeah. by Europe. And then he said Paul took it upon himself to paint pictures of white Jesus. And that's how the white propaganda got started. Did you see the lies? That's a lie. He done studied black history and black archaeology and black theology and black cosmology and black sublology and black <laughs> this and black that and black the other. He went so far black he went back. That's right. That's right. That's he got right. so caught up in his color, he blasphemed the Bible. That's right. He said Paul was a European liar. My Lord, my Lord. Yeah. Can you imagine? My Lord. Studying is good. Yeah. Glory to God, but when research makes you challenge the wisdom of God, use a historic fool. For I bear them record that I they have a zeal of God. They got a zeal of God. But not according to knowledge. Out of all the knowledge you got yeah. and out of all the hatred you have, you better not lie against God. That's right. Out of all your tongue talking and feet stomping and hand and waving and body shaking, yeah. you better not go against God. That's right. You better keep it just like God have it. Amen. Otherwise than that, shut your just mouth. Me. You see, I'm not going to talk unless the Bible talk. That's right. That's why you hear me say, come on back to the Bible. That's right. Come on back. That's right. They don't like that. No. They don't like it when I say, come on back to the Bible. Oh, and when no. I preach the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, there's one particular fellow over YouTube I laugh. And man, he, he, he said that I'm an antichrist. He said that old sick baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I believe in Matthew 20 and 19. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's right. No, no, you no. don't. You don't believe in on Matthew 20 and 19. No. Matthew 20 and 19 was fulfilled in Acts 2, 38. That's right. One said, do it in the name. The other scripture done it in the name. That's right. One said, 
Go do it. Go do the it. other, it was done. That's right. Everybody under the sun got to repent of their sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and come out of the churches you're in. Amen. What churches? All of them. Yes. Amen. Every church that started by men, pack up and get out of there. That's it. Or be loyal and die and go to hell. For I bear them record I that they have the zeal of God. Use Elias. But not according to knowledge. Use Elias. Amen. That's why you find them, uh, preacher get up there and say listen I want you to shout for me hmm. preacher call him to the front of, come on I want you to come on and, and shout for me That's right. I want you to do some steps for me and you get about three or four or five people come up in front for bishop and That's they right. start break out tomorrow some praise dance bishop told him to do it amen and to flip Wilson devil made him do it <laughs> That's right. That's the devil. That's the devil. So that's being overzealous. Yeah. When you got a bishop that can turn your anointing on mm. and turn it off, that's overzealousness. That's right. We better come on back to the Bible because we're going to give an account to God for the deeds done in our body. That's right. God don't care nothing about your personal feelings towards his word, and I sure don't. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm telling you? For I bear them record that they have a zeal There's God. something recorded here. Amen. Amen. There's a record here. I bear the record. That what? That they have a zeal of God, but not according to All knowledge. the truth of God followers. Take your time. Take your time. Don't get in the hair. Take your eyes off everybody in the church. That's right. Don't go following no brother. That's right. Don't you go following some sister. <laughs> That's right. You follow leadership. Amen. Pastor Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You don't find the saints in the Bible trying to follow running behind Timothy. No. Running behind uh, Eraskus oh, no. and running behind Naomi. You don't find that. Be ye followers of me. What? 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1. Do you hear the Bible be, talking? Be ye followers of me. How? Even as I also am of Christ. I'm determined to stay behind Jesus. There's some people come here and try to pull me away from Jesus. <laughs> That's right. They go reaching out for me, trying to pull me away from Jesus. I don't even turn my back. I just slap them away. Bye. <laughs> Amen. Jesus right in front of me. I'm going to follow them. That's it. Another one come. Bye. <laughs> That's right. One jump in front of me. <laughs> That's right. Shake you off there. Shake them off. Yeah. That's right. Shake you off. That's right. Go ahead. What? I'm hey. coming right back behind Jesus. That's it. That's wonderful, bro. Why? Thank God because he gave me the word when he gave it to me. Go ahead, man. He's my defense. That's right. Glory to God, and I'm right behind. Him. That's right. And when the false prophets come, I got some good I got some good blockers. That's right. I got the prophets and the apostles. I got a whole line. Go ahead, man. And then sometimes the devil try to come through. I see him coming. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That way. That's right. You understand? Go ahead, man. That way. Devil try to come again. He coming. I'm. <laughs> That's right, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, and if you fellas that come this way and don't believe this, you're wasting your time. Oh, yeah. But I want to sit and talk to Pastor Jennings. You can talk to me all you want. Amen. This book here ain't changing. No, no. Until this change, I ain't changing. That's right. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Jesus Christ is God all. How is it? Oh, my God. How is it? You fellas out there, what you're doing ain't working for you. No. That's right. I mean, think about it. That's true. Well, what you doing is not working for you. It's not working. A man, it's like a man sitting and telling me, well, you know, what you're preaching is wrong. Well, if what you're preaching is so right, where's your work? That's right. Where's your work? That's Where right. is it? I'm preaching Jesus and him crucified. Oh, yes. I'm preaching that God was manifested in the flesh. I'm preaching that flesh was the only begotten of the Father, That's full right. of grace and truth. I'm preaching that flesh was a body set aside for a sacrificial offering for the world. That's right. I'm preaching what Paul preached, that sacrifice of offering that word is not but a body. That's not preparing me. And God was manifested in the flesh. God was manifested in that body. God was manifested in that son. And the Son of God consists of flesh and blood, and the nature that was God that was in that body was the Spirit Himself. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. The Son of God died on the cross. Yeah. Nothing left but flesh and bones. That's it. Spirit preached down in the grave three days and three nights. Spirits get back in the body and pick the body up and glorify it. That's right. And now it's a glorified body that's still called Son of God. Son of God. But he's no longer a Son of God in the natural, but he has an eternal title, Son, son. with an eternal body that's glorified. That's right. 
You better not tell me that body that's in heaven is a human being. No, that thing is spiritual. Yes. The natural died and the spiritual rose. That's it. Are oh, you listening to the old man? Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why the Bible said the Lord himself, himself. shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a shout. Yes. and the voice of an archangel. And the dead in Christ shall rise. For well, yes, Jesus Christ yes. is God, was yes. God, going to be God. His flesh wasn't God. No. The spirit that was in that flesh was God. That's it. One part of him had a beginning and the other part always was. That's right. The spirit is from everlasting, but the flesh that the spirit was in had a birthday. Yeah. It was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Yes. And they died so we can preach it. That's right. Huh? That's right. What did he say, son? Pray bear the record that they have a zeal of God. And what? But not according to knowledge. So you fellows that got all this anointing, where's your work? Where's the work? If what I'm preaching is so wrong and what you're preaching is so right, and you got so much power, where's your work? That's right. That's right. Yeah. You got more than one God. One of them gods should be able to do something for you. Amen. <laughs> one of them gods should be able to do something for you. That's right. One. This one God that we have, we're lifting the head of creation. Oh, yes. That's all David needed was one stone in the sling. Yeah. That's right. And when that stone was hurdled, it took Goliath's head and knocked him down. Amen. Amen. I'm seeing the hand of God taking this one message. Yeah. Be ye holy. Be holy. And it's hitting the head of politicians, mayors, Governors and Democrats, yeah. Republicans and liberals, black, yeah. white, yellow, red. That one message. That's okay. right. That's right. Be holy. Be holy. Wonderful. Name no need to try to be anything else. That's it. Because you're going to have a tough time yeah. just trying to be holy. That's right. Don't be over righteous. Let's go back to the book of Ecclesiasticus. Amen. Am I about taking your time and. It is more wiser. Yeah. Right. Mm, it's good to be more wiser uh, to take your time than, right, right. than to be on a run. That's you right. See, that's why you got to have a guide. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20 and verse 32. Yes. Necessary patience. What? Necessary patience. Necessary. Necessary patience. Amen. Nece all of us need necessary patience. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Necessary. Amen. When we would look seeking God for this place, we had to have necessary patience. Yes, you did. And I often think of the woman preacher that wrote me a letter. She said, I know you don't believe in women preachers, Pastor Jennings, but I'm Reverend Mother so-and-so. She said, I want you to know that God made me a preacher, and I know you don't believe it, but here's an <laughs> offering anyway. He, she said, even I want to see you have that campus. Wonderful. Amen. Well, God brought it to pass. Amen. And we're looking for God to bring the other things the past. All I, look, all I need Wonderful. is your cooperation. That's all. If you can't see it, you don't have to see it. That's right. You just give me your cooperation. That's it. Glory to God and the Holy Ghost. That's but right. let everything else fall in place and do the rest. That's right. Do you see what Amen. I'm talking? Amen. What is that? Necessary patience. Necessary. I want you to get all, especially you young people. Yeah. Don't get so close to nobody. Yes. Is anybody calling you now? Lead a church, lead a church. That's a cult, that's a cult, that's a cult. Say whatever you want. That's right. Hmm? That's right. That's what they'll do. They've been doing it for years. Yeah. It's a cult, it's a cult. Then why are you so interested <laughs> in this so called cult Amen. that the Lord is using? That's right. That's right. That's why God has said it varies. He'll break up relationship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, break up so-called friendship. That's right. Keep your eyes on God. You see, I, I have experienced that overzealousness when I was a young child. Yeah. And I grew out of that mess. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because when you're overzealous, you look past what the scripture said. That's right. But when God toned you down, replaced your spark plugs. Amen. Come out of 12 cylinders. Amen. And then don't even put you on a bike. Just put you on your feet, make you take your time and walk. That's right. Now you begin to notice and you're more observant. Yeah. And you see better. Oh, yes. Hmm? Necessary patience. Yeah, man. A lot of you fellas so busy shaking with your fellow shaking colleagues. You can't listen at nothing. That's right. He's shaking, you shaking, everybody's shaking and baking and the others helping. <laughs> That's right. So much anointing, but you can't hear. Amen. It ain't that much anointing in a giraffe's neck to shorten it. <laughs> that you can't hear instructions. That's right. 
You can't hear instruction. If a skillful man. Listen at the Bible. In the book of Ecclesiastes 21 and this verse 15. This is why 15. I keep telling people, I don't believe nothing. No. But what's written here. That's right. I don't believe nothing but what's written. That's right. You can talk to your blue in the face. I ain't paying you no mind. All I'm looking at what's written here. <laughs> Amen. What is it? In the book of Ecclesiastes 21 and verse 15. Yes. If a skillful man. If a skillful man. Hear a wise word. Hear a wise word. He will commend it. He will commend it. And add unto it. And will add to it. But as soon as one of as no understanding hear it. As soon as one of no, no understanding, understanding hear it. It displeaseth him and he casteth it behind his back. They fighting me now. Oh yes. Because the knowledge that we're preaching is too deep for them. That's right. And as soon as a fool hear it, that's right. They throw it behind their back. That's right. Pastor Jennings preaches one God. Pastor Jennings preach it ain't no flesh and blood in heaven. Don't blame it on Pastor Jennings. Amen. It was written. Oh yes. The first of all commandments is here of Israel. The Lord our God is one. Yeah. The Catholic Church done preached that lie for years. Oh, yes. Three persons in the Godhead. Mary got a flesh and blood baby up in heaven. I remember Pope Francis got over the air. And when he was here in Philadelphia and said, Jesus is up in heaven with a flesh and blood body like him. He wish. He wish. That body changed. That's right. From mortal to immortality. immortality. The terrestrial put on the celestial. Yeah. And now that thing is in, that's in heaven now can't die. That's right. Can't die at all. At all. Do you hear this? If a skillful man hear a wise word. A skillful he, man hear a wise word. He will commend it. He will commend it. And add unto it. And then add some more wisdom to it. But as soon as, as one soon of no understanding hears it. As someone who's overzealous, overrighteous, in a hairy, always quoting scriptures in their mouth. Let me say this. Amen. I don't care what kind of lie you believe. Somebody's out there preaching it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Somebody asked me, Pastor Jenner, do it bother you when, one, when anyone leave the truth? No, I pray for them. Pray for them. No, I pray for them. No, I, that's all I do. Yeah. And, and that's all I do, pray for them. I don't have no time for none of the other side. So I just pray for them. That's right. So I say, oh, that's the attitude you got? Yeah, you know, I pray for them. Yeah. The Bible said, uh, you know, they went out from us out because there wasn't enough. It's going to be fulfilled. Right. Somebody said, but why don't bother you? Because uh, in my experience, what I'm, what I'm experiencing now is when one go. One and two hundred come in. That's right. Two go. Three and five. I'm not making it up either. That's right. In one week's time, 115 baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Who's doing that now? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. The Holy Ghost is doing it. Amen. And it's still going. Oh, yes. In other words, you can shoot all the nails in this tire. It's one of those tires that can't flat. That's right. It don't even have a slow leak. That's right. Wonderful. Hmm? Holy Ghost say, God add daily. Daily. Such as should be saved, and I'm steadfast. Oh, yes. And I am unmovable. Now, right. this is one thing I'm not trying to be unmovable in. Mm -hmm. I am steadfast. Oh, yes. And I am unmovable oh. in this doctrine of the apostles. That's right. And being unmoved, the Lord have blessed us greatly, and the half still have not yet been told. Amen. I know some of y'all can't see what I'm driving, but Amen. the half have not been told. Wonderful. God, you're still in the beginning stages of it. My Lord. My I Lord. Still, I'm still rejoicing over the, year, the last year of uh, those that was baptized, 7,442 in one year. Wonderful. Still thanking God for it. Wonderful. Amen. The, this year came in. We're several hundred. We, we only in February. That's right. That's right. We only in February and we already almost up to five or six hundred baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Already. Amen. Amen. It's the wonderful works of God. That's right. That's right. The devil make you look at Geno Jennings. Yeah. And you become obsessed with Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings, you in your dream. Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings. That's right. You're falling, Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings. You're drinking, Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings, Geno Jennings. That's right. My Lord, my Can't even call on Jesus good. Geno, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Geno Jennings. Jesus. <laughs> Preachers got me all in their mind. My Lord. 
They trying to lay hands on folk and pray for them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. All in, my, all in your mind. That's right. They confused, Pastor. They confused. Confused. <laughs> Amen. Here I don't even know you walking on the earth. That's right. Unless someone say something passing and laughing. That's right. You bear this thing in mind. Amen. Let's go back to Ecclesiasticus quick. Back in Ecclesiasticus 20 and verse 32. Listen good. Necessary patience in Necessary seeking the patience. Lord. Necessary patience. I want all of you watching and get this. Amen. If you don't take your time, you ain't going to last long in church. No. You're going to be a church hopper. That's, That's right. True. That's right. Because zeal don't make you settle down and, 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 and overzealous. You don't settle down in no place. No. You go from place to place, place to place, place to place, place to place until you just make shipwreck. That's right. And you will destroy everything around you. That's right. You sisters, don't you marry no overzealous fella? No. Someone said, Pastor Dylan, how you recognize it? He always in the spirit. Always. Amen. Am I right? Always. Yes. Always in the always. spirit. Amen. 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 Just got married on your honeymoon. You come in taking off your stuff. He laying there smiling, waiting on you for you to do it. You don't know whether you come at the bed or just. That's right. Are you getting what I'm talking? Amen. Amen. Over there, you tear your house up. Yes, you will. Tear it down. You couldn't even sit and play with your daughters. Daughters want to play house. Got little doll babies. When my uh, two oldest daughters was babies, uh, my wife bought them, uh, you know, a doll house. Nice. You know, doll house came a long way, you know. <laughs> this one had an oven and uh, running water and all that stuff. And, <laughs> hey, man. So Brittany, <laughs> Brittany and Sierra, uh, Brittany always would make sure that uh, Sierra or, 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 or she will have at least more cookies left than Sierra. Yeah. So if, if they got even cookies, Sierra got five, Brittany got five, you know, Brittany, she would eat hers. And Sierra will take her time. Yeah. And Sierra, Brittany would tell Sierra, look, you're not supposed to be slow. <laughs> I only got three cookies and you got four. We supposed to have the same amount. <laughs> so Sierra at the time didn't know better. She had stuff in her mouth. So Brittany said, all right, let's count. One, two, three. One, two, three. She said, now I'm ready to get another one. You get yours. <laughs> Brittany made it her bed and Sierra ain't going to have more goodies. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Viewers, yeah. I want to tell you. Take your, time. Take your time. When I was, my children was, my two girls was babies, I played dollhouse with them. That's right. That's right. My mother, my, my, not my mother, my wife, she had bring up some tea and put it in one of their pictures and they had their little cups. I'm sitting there, Brittany pulling tea in the cup and Sierra and we sitting down there with tea and I got the salsa, I'm drinking out the cup and cookies and whatnot and and sometimes eating a choke sandwich. That's what we call peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You know, hood, no. We call them choke sandwiches or gag sandwiches. Hey, Amen. And uh, so Brittany gave me one of her doll babies. Sierra gave me hers. And hey, man, and I'm brushing and combing the hair. And, and I remember uh, Brittany was asking me, well, Daddy, you know how to plait hair? Well, I, I said, well, I, I do something. Yeah. And so I took it and was just doing something, laying doing it, and uh, everything came loose. And Brittany just said, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but I wasn't so holy. Right. And my zeal didn't eat me up. That's right. That I didn't know how to be a father. That's right. That's what I'm telling you, wild infidel. That's right. That's right. Wonderful. You got so much anointing, you don't even want to take care of your children? Mm. Speaking in tongues, don't put food in their mouth. No. Mm. Imagine that, a man to my son, the Holy Ghost told him don't work. Mm. He got a house full of kids. I'm, it sounds funny, but these are cases that Pastor Jen has dealt with. Yeah. Had brothers come to mention about the Holy Ghost told him don't work. 
His wife should work and he should sit home so he can pray in the house and build up the power of God in the house. I told him, you liar. That's right. Bible said if you don't work, you don't eat. You don't eat. For even when we were with you. Listen at this. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. Even. Even when we were with you. When we were among you. This we commanded. We commanded while we were with you. That if any would not work. If any don't work. Neither should he eat. So he shouldn't have nothing to eat. That's right. That's right. That's right. Huh? Amen. Don't work. No. Neither should he eat. You don't want to work and take care of your children. Right. Your wife shouldn't cook you nothing. That's right. That's right. That's what the Bible says, obeying all things. You got to obey this. That's right. That if any would not work. Who? That, that if any would not work. But he's speaking in tongue and shaking. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. I'm not talking about someone who lost their job and they're out there hunting for one. No. I'm talking about some who made up in their mind they ain't working. That's right. This we commanded you. I dealt with cases where no good run down bums told their wives, well, I go to work if you give me some. Oh, no! <laughs> Want to exchange sex for employment. Can you imagine the bums? My Lord. And they speak in tongue. <laughs> That's right. Talking in tongue heathen. Amen. You are heathen. That's a heathen. You are heathen, I said. That's right. He don't want to work. I'm not talking about a man that lost his job no. and no. looking for employment. I'm talking about a man who is lazy and deliberately Deliberate. refused to work to take care of that house. That's right. The word of God says. For even when we were with you, this we commanded Paul, you. Wait a minute. It's a request. This we commanded you. It's the order of God. Right. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. Don't fix him nothing. No. That's right. That's right. That's right. The Bible's talking. That if any The Bible is talking. That's right. Speak in tongue now. Let, let me see your anointing now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I had some men left me because of this scripture. Lord. There were some men told me. I have I remember one brother came to me and said, Well, Pastor Dennis, I I, I, I want to be a minister. Mm. I said, why? He said, I don't want to work. He actually thought that the ministers didn't work. Wow. I said, these brothers work. That's right. He said, you know how the Bible said never can these accountants change? His <laughs> face dropped. Oh, Lord. He said, they do? I said, yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. oh Lord. I, tell you, I told him, you go find a job and go get a job and go to work. Go to work. That if oh, any would not work. The Bible said when I was among you. That's right. Huh? For even when we were with when you. When we were with you. This we commanded you. I command the same thing. That if any would not work. You don't want to work. Neither should he eat. Don't cook him nothing. No. For we hear. What? We hear. We hear. That there are some which walk among you disorderly. Working not at all. But are busy bodies. Uh -oh. you're so, you won't work. Amen. Because you're so lazy. Because what you're doing. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. Working not at all, but are busy bodies. Don't want to work. Just want to be nosy. That's right. Now, them that are such. Wait a minute. Amen. Look at the further instructions yeah. given from God through the apostles. In them that are like this. We command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ. What? That with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You go somewhere and be quiet. That's and right. Eat quietly. That's right. Mind your business. Mind your business. That's right. That's right. That's right. But when, you, when, yeah, when you're overzealous, you run, you run and speak in tongue and shout all past them scriptures. That's right. And you go past that scripture. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> I can't have lazy men following me. No. no. Me and you won't get along. No. No way. Amen. I'm telling you straight up, me and you won't get along. That's right. Because God is not lazy. Oh, no. And if you had a lazy leader, you, we wouldn't be here. No way. Some of you may remember when I was a child, there was a cartoon called Hillbilly Bears. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Only the family understood what the father was saying. That's right. Anyone who watched the cartoon never understood. Amen. All he did was mumble. <laughs> then he'd laugh and go, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Hill Billy Bears. That's right. Nobody, nobody understood him. That's right. Lazy as he can be. Lazy. Now that's exact. So the farm will come in handy. Oh, yes. Farm will come in hand. The church farm will come in hand. Oh, yes. Amen. Let folks roll up their sleeves and see what it's like 
to really, really work. Yeah. yeah. Not get down there and try to talk work. You see, when I came up, my mother used to take me. See, when I came up, the mothers of the church would go take care of the sick women and clean their houses and cook for them. And the women that knew how to bathe the folk would bathe them. You know, and I had to stay downstairs. But when I was downstairs, I was very observant. Yeah. And uh, when I came up, the women that was taking care of the, any old mother uh, that was there, they wasn't standing around running off at their mouth. Okay. When they say clean your house, they cleaned it from top to bottom and wasn't getting paid. Amen. They cooked for you. They didn't come there and anything was missing. Yeah. Right. They didn't steal your little porcelain yeah. ornaments. That's right. They didn't see a spoon and like it. Yeah. No. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. A lot of these young folk never did this. No. They never done none of this. Don't even know what it is. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the foundation of the thing so I can quit. Back in Romans chapter 10 and at verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That they might be saved. Repent of your sins, viewer. Amen. God wants you to be sorry about your sins. Yes. Everybody. Yes. Be sorry about all your sins. Repent of them. That's right. Be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the only baptism for the world. That's right. Let the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance as they did on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem. That's yeah. right. And then continue steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles, which is the teaching of Jesus. Amen. And come out of every man-made religion under the sun. That's right. All right. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. There is Arius. But not according to knowledge. You overzealous brothers and sisters. Yeah. Take your time. Listen. Listen. You shaking and jumping so much until you can't listen. You go somewhere and sit down. That's right. Go somewhere and sit down. Amen. That's Take right. your time. Jesus said, learn of me. Learn. Stay away from overzealous brothers and sisters. Yeah. They'll pull you right out of the truth. Oh, yeah. Pull you right out of it. Them the kind, as I said before, they'll be on the, in their house making little recordings of themselves and play it back. <laughs> yeah. Hear how it sounds. Yeah, man, why? The first ones they want to get in the hands of their lives is their friends. That's right. And when their friends is unstable and not sound, they are gullible. That's right. And they are running, follow a fool, and he'll lead you or she'll lead you right to hell. That's true. Or he'll try to convince his girlfriend. Amen. Stay away from overzealous brothers. They're no good for husbands. And overzealous women is no good for wives. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Overzealous, here you want to be with your wife, and here she want to read scriptures and have devotional service. My Lord. <laughs> That's Amen. Right. Amen. What I look like, want to be with my wife. Come on, baby, come on in here. <laughs> Daddy's home. That's right. <laughs> And here I come in the room and she said, just a minute. Just a Reason why I'm in the church, I don't want to be lost. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Am I right, I say? Overzealous. Overzealous. When you're overzealous, you believe that before you and your husband come together, <laughs> and enjoy each other that you both should have devotionals first. That's right. You both should exchange testimonies, then read a scripture, and both of you sing a song, and then have prayer, but come together. Oh, Look, Lord. by the time you do all that, I ain't going to want to do nothing. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I ain't going to want to do That's nothing. Do nothing. Hmm? That's right. Hey, Amen. You done, the spirit done, the spirit may come over me. And look, I can't be in the spirit and in the mood at the same time. No way. Someone got to go. <laughs> That's, right. Yeah. That's right. Hey, man, I want to bring your zeal back yeah. to reality. That's right. Wonderful, wonderful teaching. Now, what I'm saying may sound funny, but I'm telling you, in my position, you deal with all type of speaking in tongue quacks. <laughs> Remember when we were debating Dirty Harry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dirty Harry plainly said that the spirit of the Lord 
be upon him that's what he when he is with his partner. That's what you remember said. that? That's right. That's what Dirty Harry said. That's right. That the spirit of the Lord be upon him that's right. when he's with his partner. How hell oh, deserving. How much deception did the devil do to him? Yeah. You don't need no anointing to have sex. <laughs> no. No, you don't need that. Oh, no. You don't need no anointing. No. Not at all. That's right. Amen. So if my wife gonna do all that, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> I ain't gonna be thinking about her after all them scriptures all and that. Jesus and Holy Ghost come upon me. I'm walking around the room. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, come on, let's go to bed. Amen. And the Spirit gonna have me wore out. That's I'm gonna right. be laying in bed. That's right. It sounds funny, but if you're overzealous, that's what you're going to end up doing. Amen. Wife got to sit on the edge of the bed while you teach her for 15 minutes of what Peter and John said. And she sit there with her head covered and with a bathrobe on and say, amen. That's right, honey. My Lord. Amen. My Lord. That's right, honey. It sounds funny. Mm. But I'm speaking hardcore truth. Amen. You will be surprised how many homes is dismantled right now yeah. because there was some overzealous nut <laughs> That's right. who blamed his actions yeah. on God. Yeah, God. God said this. God said this. Let me tell you how dangerous overzealousness is. Uh -huh. Some women have murdered their children mm. That's true. because they said the Lord spoke to them. Spoke to them. Yeah. There was a case in the 1950s. I love history. And I can't think of the woman's name. I think she had five kids in the 1950s. She said the Lord spoke to her and told her that all her children were possessed of the devil. And she said she asked the Lord, how can I get the devil out? And in her words, she said the Lord told her, you have to drown each one of your kids. My Lord, that my Lord. woman was so overzealous and she couldn't identify God from the devil from her own mental disease. Yeah. She took each child, uh -huh. held it under water, and had all the other children in the bathroom looking mm. as their siblings gagged their last breath. My Lord, my Don't Lord. you think this is something that's not strange? That's right. Overzealous Overzealous. people are dead today. Right been murdered today. Yeah. The Jim Jones situation in the 70s. Yeah. The people was overzealous and was gullible and believed what he said, so he murdered them with any kickback. That's right. That's right. Overzealousness bring about gullibleness. Gullibleness. gullibleness brings about death and destruction. That's right. All of these things can be avoided if you wait to get knowledge. Amen. The devil make you hate Pastor Jennings, viewer. Because the devil make you pay more attention to how I sound. Right. He don't let you pay attention to what I'm saying. That's right. He make you focus on how I sound and the way I sound, sound unpleasant to you. Yeah. Sound mean, sound arrogant, sound prideful. <laughs> That's right. And you focus on that. Yeah. Fail to realize that if you pay attention, pay attention and follow me in the scriptures. That's it. And it'll be the best decision you ever made since you fell from your mama's womb. That's right. Repent of your sins. <laughs> be baptized in water. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody here want to get right with God and get their sins washed away and get on God's side and want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and once and for all, come out of the man-made churches. Stand on your feet if you want it. Wonderful. Wonderful. All of you that are standing, come on around to the front. All of you that are standing. You see how wonderful this is? Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Take heed to what I'm telling you. This is a lesson of warning. That's right. Stay away from overzealous men and women. When a person is over his age, you can't have a regular conversation without hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother, how you doing? Hallelujah, I'm doing all right, brother. Yeah. Sister, how you doing? Oh, bless the Lord, I'm good and highly favored. <laughs> 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 
That's right. My wife asked me, Gina, what you want to eat? Well, I tell her, well, you know, the Bible said, eat whatsoever is sold in the shamble. I ain't got no time for that. No. Just whatever you cook, all right, yeah, just give me that. Let me eat it. That's, That's right. right. Overzealous. Overzealous. Someone has asked to lead prayer. And when they get ready to close the prayer, you want to keep going. <laughs> lead. If they lead in the prayer, then you follow the lead. That's right. right. And bring it on in. Come on in, son. <laughs> That's right. Come on in. Bring it on home now. Bring it home. Glory to God. May God keep you. May God preserve you. I want to say to my transportation team, or rather, my traveling committee. My traveling committee, the meeting today is at 4.30. It'll be in the traveling office on the third floor. Amen. Uh, I will call in and go over things with you, and we will do the meeting that way. We'll meet and sister you. The meeting will take place 